Hey guys, how's it going? Today I want to give you a tour of the areas right behind me because I feel like they're looking really pretty. Here we are mid-August. They've made it through probably the worst of our heat and they still look really fresh, which makes me really proud of them. Um, so I wanted to start with this brick raised bed circle area here, which as you know, we're not, we're going to be retooling this area. So it's likely this is going to be changed in some way. Um, I had not intended on planting this spot i actually intended on removing the firelight hydrangeas and planting them out elsewhere we didn't get to that and then we ended up having some leftover supertunias because you know we did projects at the college and uh, out of the church we go to children's relief nursery anyway we ended up with a few extras and we decided late in the season to pop them in the ground and i'm so glad we did because i feel like this is so pretty it looks kind of like an easter basket i think it looks the prettiest from this direction right here because it gets the most amount of sun. The other side gets shaded by our golden rain tree. Uh, but look at all the color here. It's just such a fun kind of unplanned. I love that when you do a project that you totally didn't even plan on doing and it turns out so pretty. So of course I said firelight hydrangeas in the center which are just starting to show the tiniest bit of blush pink color. Just so fun. That means fall is coming you guys and the heat will go away. That's a good sign. In the middle there, we have Vertigo Penicetum. It's a beastly annual grass in the best sense. Uh, when you plant it late in the season, like I did, it won't get near the size it would had I planted it in May. Um, so typically they'll get like 48 feet tall and several feet wide. So I think it'll be just a really nice accent in the center there. We've got Supertunia Vista Bubblegum. There's some um, uh, Bordeaux tucked in, Vista Silverberry. There's a couple of Trailing Blue Veined. Just a really pastel, pa pastel, pastel <laughs> um, mix of color there. I did put some hippo rose in. I had a few of those, so I just kind of dotted those around. They're looking a little weary, I think, from the heat. Um, but once we have some cooler temperatures, once that heat goes down, I think they'll pick back up. Right above this area, we have a golden rain tree, which is one of my favorites. It It's a little bit of a messy tree, I'm not gonna lie. Those pods are full of seeds. The pods blow all over in our garden and they do sprout. They're easy to pull though. And the tree itself is just so pretty. It adds so much interest with its multi trunks. Um, I think it looks the best this year because prior years it seemed like we had little sections dying out that we'd have to cut out every year and i was kind of worried about the tree that maybe it was starting to die for i couldn't find any insects or any disease or anything on it it just seemed to be losing pieces not this year blooms beautiful yellow in the spring i think i do have a picture of that and then it's followed by these beautiful lantern seed pods so interestingly enough this is the most used seating area on our entire property i did not expect that when we moved in sometimes it takes a while to use your space to know how you actually will use it i thought when we moved in here that the fireplace area would be where we sat the most and it's kind of the opposite like we do use that more when it's cooler out because we actually do use the fireplace but right here because i think it's along the main path from the kitchen to the barn kitchen to the greenhouse i think we just naturally find ourselves out here and honestly like these bricks as you know uneven and unkept as they are samantha loves these <laughs> we put her in her stroller she loves the bumpy like bumpy gravel or bumpy bricks and so we can be sitting in here benjamin can be playing or riding his lawn tractor around and we can just walk her around in these bricks and it like lulls her to sleep. It's really quite wonderful. So no matter how we retool this area, we will figure out how to incorporate a seating spot underneath this tree canopy, um, just because we use it so much. And the view, you guys. The view from this seating area really can't be beat. I don't think at this point. There's the Hartley with the brick done. We'll take a look at that here in just a second, but I wanted to show you the butterfly garden Benjamin's little space out here, which has been so fun, so much fun. And I think we'll do something like this every year, possibly in this spot next year, possibly somewhere else. Uh, we did do a video where I tore apart pallets to build the fence. I was worried for a second there in that windstorm where we lost the spruce tree. I thought for sure of anything on our property, this would be down because I didn't have proper posts. I used two by fours that I found in the pallets and there's only four posts anchoring this whole entire square fence section down. Like this doesn't even have a post right here and it held up just fine. Beautiful plants in here. I couldn't have fit any more. And Benjamin picked out his own box full of plants and he placed them and that's where we planted them. That's why we have like a random zinnia sitting right here. But he's so proud of these, you guys. He walks in here and he, the other night he goes, mama, they all growed up. 
look at all the flowers they're beautiful it's so sweet uh, and so he comes out and he checks on them and that's the thing like I want to start projects with the kids that and kind of incorporate in, them in just enough to where they really think it's fun instead of like I didn't think he would probably enjoy planting every single plant in this area but he enjoyed you know getting to be involved in some way so I think every year he'll be more and more involved in this sort of concept whether or not we change it a little bit or not now I haven't noticed a lot of butterflies recently I did in more in the beginning stages like right after we planted all of these things uh, there was a hummingbird in here about 30 seconds before we turned on the camera and it's always full of honeybees because all of these plants are pollinator attracting attracting plants and you can see the sunflowers autumn beauty we're seeing some color up there I planted those from seed after the windstorm we did have to stake a number of them up so if you look close in there in fact let me see if I can show you you can see a green stake right there so a few of them are being held up by stakes but they provide a wonderful inexpensive quick growing backdrop because there was nothing behind this area you know all the the crab apple that we had here and the the junipers and the pine trees of course all of that coverage we had removed um, and so it was just kind of open I wanted a kind of green block just to kind of visually stop your eye so that you really noticed this and not what was beyond it so I think the sunflowers really did that you can see the plain the blue salvia absolutely gorgeous plant this is probably like my top in my top three favorite annuals I just I love it it's a beautiful beautiful green right here it looks like velvety kind of a medium velvety shiny green the blooms are wonderful and even when the blooms are done like right here see how this looks oh my black-eyed Susan vines crawling up the salvia here but see right here this bloom is spent but the calyx that holds the petals on so here's a spent petal whoops the calyx that holds those petals on stays kind of a, a nice blue color, purpley blue. So they don't really appear like you need to deadhead them, which I appreciate. Uh, purple fountain grass right in the center. Even though that's not necessarily a butterfly attracting plant, I wanted some grassy, dark colored uh, leaf texture and, and interest in there. Uh, as we come in here, you'll see a repeat of some of the purple fountain grass there in the back and right here, which I do think was was needed I mean don't you think that I think if it was just a mass of color without that kind of weight it would have been a little bit more chaotic looking I believe this one's Wendy's wish salvia this is one salvia plant I never planted this one before we found this when uh, Aaron and I were at far west in Boise so I picked up five of them and I've got them all in this garden but beautiful bright pink I think that this oh there it is Aaron you see it you see the hummingbird oh i was just gonna say i think this kind of flower is what attracts hummingbirds that tube shaped the bright color just kind of beckons them in there's sweet romance lavender one two three four on each side kind of a little hedge um, we got these stepping stones out of flower beds around the garden um, so we just use those i do have some butterfly ones that somebody sent us to put in here some butterfly stepping stones so we will do that um, Benjamin's flowers, the zinnias here. He also picked out a few petunias that are tucked in. And like, this is gorgeous right here. The lime green Nicotiana, which I also picked up at Far West in Boise. Look at that. I did kind of a big drift of that. And I think that's such a cooling element in this space. And this petunia in particular looks great with it. I don't even know the variety name, but that's one of the ones Benjamin picked out. There's another Wendy's Wish Salvia. Uh, Gomfrina. There's four of them that kind of tuck around the base of this pillar. The ones on the left look like they're getting too much water. Ones on the right look good. I don't know what the deal is there. Um, but we've got lemon jade sedum in the container. I did that on purpose so that um, we didn't have to water this. I didn't really want to have to figure out drip to that. Um, I could have, but I wanted something that wasn't super colorful actually. I wanted something that was just a, like a mono. One plant in a pot. This one will bloom yellow. It's got buds everywhere on it. Uh, there's more play in the blues in the back here as well as some saturn sunflowers helianthus and there's some other saturns in here too but it looks like they really haven't kept up with the vigor of the salvia or nicotiana back there um, you just never know sometimes oh i did want to show you a couple things so this one here is a thumbergia it's a new one for next year called coconut appeal it's the one that's growing up the salvia there on the other side that beautiful pure white with the dark eye and it seems like just in the last several weeks 
couple weeks it has stooled out like really thickened up and I imagine we'll have some growth up here on the fence before too long but I also wanted to show you this this is a new plant for next year so see there's the pod I wonder if that yeah look at that there's the seeds inside those pods uh, anyway this is called Safari Dawn James Britannia super super duper low maintenance plant I needed to groom it mercy I should have done that before this anyway super low maintenance plant you don't have to deadhead it i don't know that we've even fed it that many times with fertilizer but it's a super beautiful can take the full sun lots of beautiful color i think they look like they glow the flowers like, look at that the pink with that kind of that yellow just makes it look kind of almost neon or has a glow quality to it really like that plant okay now Let's take a look at the Hartley. The bricks are done. They just finished that up this week. Now we are waiting on cleaning the glass and cleaning the structure kind of as a whole. We have to wait till the floor is down because it's really not worth it. We get a pretty nice breeze almost every single night in this, this soil right here. Like <laughs> that powdery soil, we get one little breeze and we would feel like we needed to clean again. So uh, the guys who installed it, they were like, don't even worry about the glass until you get your floor done. Um, and so we'll get the floor done as soon as we're waiting on HVAC still. So we're going to get some ducting put in there so we can heat and cool if we need to. So once that's done, we can put the floor down, um, in which case we can kind of start thinking about how we want to do this. Now, my thought is that the front of this structure, I want beautiful things and we'll probably bring, we're doing large slate, uh, kind of a medium to dark gray slate tile on the inside and I think bringing that out as kind of a landing area and maybe taking it around the outside I'm not sure it'll either come out and stop and then we'll have something else like maybe gravel or something like that or it may span the entire distance and around the Hartley but but I want to keep anything we do in front at a very minimal I, I don't even know that I want to do a whole lot right up here it may just be grass which we will have to fix. We're gonna redo sprinklers and stuff in this area, but I don't want anything to subtract from the view of this. I don't want anything to be in the way of it. I don't want, yeah, I want to just look out here and see the structure because the structure itself is absolutely glorious. I love it. Like even though we can't really use it yet and I can't put flowers in it yet and things like that, I just, I stare at it. <laughs> I wanna take pictures of it all the time. It just looks so pretty. Um, you can see over here, like how uh, far down it comes anyway. It was kind of hard to visualize there because a lot of this, you know, it was open um, and it was concrete down to the footers. So it was kind of hard to envision where the wall would actually start. Um, this is where our sink's gonna be on the inside. We'll hop in there here in a second so you can see the brick in there. So this will be lowered. It's just up there so we know where it's at. Um, when we get everything hooked up, that'll be lowered. The soil will be brought up to the base of the brick so you won't see any of the bottom of that. Uh, and I'll probably have some sort a flower bed low still I want to be able to see in and out I don't want to block the view back here I'm thinking about doing some sort of formal knot garden so you know as you come out the back doors we're gonna to have to retool we knew we were gonna to have to but we'll remove most everything back here not the stuff right behind the chicken coop but everything right in my direct like path here and we'll reuse it you know we'll move plants to different areas of our garden but i'm thinking like some networks of either built up raised beds that are brick or stone or boxwood something like that but something very formal in the back here and i think i like the idea of doing it back here as opposed to doing it over here because it's smaller it's a smaller area and i like that it'll make it look a little bit more cozy back here um, and a little bit more like it's its own room so anyway we've got a lot of work to do and that probably won't start until next season but let's head inside so i did pop a christmas it's gonna get echoey i popped a christmas tree in here the other day uh, knowing that i mean look at this we left the soil level or they left the soil rather rather uh, down because we're going to be putting in we didn't want to do a concrete pad with drains we wanted it to be like a regular greenhouse floor where water can go like drop on the floor and then soak down so there'll be you know gravel and sand layer um, and then the the slate layer will come up here that's where the actual floor will be will be right here uh, but i popped the christmas tree right here just to see what it was going to look like i took a picture and shared it with you guys i don't know that this is exactly where i'm going to put it um, but i know i think the area on the other side so 
Let me start on this side. Sink here, I think I'm gonna do a counter because I'd like to be able to set up like cocktail stuff or even a buffet style because we're gonna have a table in here. Um, and then an area to work on plants too. So we'll have the sink here so I can put plants next to it and work on them with a pretty view out to the garden. So Christmas tree will probably end up right here. And then I'm thinking a small like dining cir circular shaped dining table right in here, maybe kind of tucked in. And of course, plants all over. We're gonna do citrus and some tropicals and things like that in this space. But I really wanted this not to be like a working greenhouse in terms of like seed starting and um, all of that stuff, which can be a huge mess. You know what I mean? I mean, we've got the other greenhouse in the studio uh, where I will do all of that stuff. I've got all of my setup over there anyway. I want this to be the beautiful spot like the spot where I put all the things that look really good and the spot where we can entertain and it's an extension of the house. So um, whatever we get in here, I wanna make sure it's like really comfortable um, and beautiful so we can feel like, I don't know, like it's a little escape out here, but we, it's hot in here right now. So let's go back outside. And on the inside, we will have a chandelier hanging from the center and then lights with fans on either side to help move some air around, which may be just enough, but we will have the HVAC um, I'm thinking we'll probably have four registers, maybe two on either side. And that will be helpful if we have, you know, two months of 100 plus temperatures like this summer, or if we have a really, really cold winter, we can take the edge off of those extremes if we need to. We don't intend on heating and cooling this structure like we do our home. Uh, we just want the ability to make it comfortable for us to use it. Like you don't put in something like this and then not be able to use it four or five months out of the year because you're temperatures are too extreme. And that's one of the reasons why we're considering planting some sort of shade near it on at least the side that gets the afternoon sun that can kind of help take the edge off of the sun in this area, especially the side where we intend to do a lot of sitting um, and relaxing in here. We want it to be comfortable. So anyway, it's just so fun to see all the changes. I actually saw a comment the other day from somebody who said they had just watched through our initial tours. I think there was a series of four. Um, when we very first moved into this house, we just took like one section at a time and we showed you everything that was here and and like watching those back, it's kind of crazy. I forget how many things we've done and how how much more, you know, we've got a lot more work to do, but we're making it our own. And it's just really fun to, to do that, to be part of that process. And, uh, you know, even if we're doing stuff like the butterfly garden where it may not be permanent in that space, but what a fun memory that will be to say like, you remember when we had the butterfly garden by the Hartley? Now it's, you know, in a different area of the garden or whatever. It's just really fun. So anyway, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to show you these few areas because I think they're looking really pretty and I'm so excited about the brick being done. And isn't this pretty? Again, this is called smokestack, this color, and it's a brick veneer. And we decided to do veneer um, because I don't know why, like in the event that we decided to change the, the fascia, it's a little bit easier and less expensive to do that later on. I can't imagine ever wanting to change this into anything different than what it is. This is just like classic Hartley to me. Um, and this is extremely similar to the one I stood inside in, uh, where was that? Um, what was that nursery called? Beetham Nurseries in Cumbria in uh, the UK when we were over there in like 2015, 16, somewhere around there. I stood in this exact model. Uh, it had brick on the bottom. The only difference is it was cream color and I loved it, um, but we went with white because it matches all of our other structures. And I think the white just looks so classic to me. It's always what this kind of drawn my eye and it's what I've kind of drooled over throughout the years. I can't believe like I'm touching one right now. Like this is crazy, right? I mean, it's crazy that this is in our yard. God, I don't think it's gonna ever feel real like for a long, long, long time. I'm super thankful to have it here. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you're having a great day and we will see you in the next video. Bye.